All right, so finally getting to your video, so thanks for being patient. What I wasn't sure of, when you started off, she starts walking really fast, and I didn't know if you asked her to start going this fast, or she did that just on her own. So what I like to do is when I first come in the arena, is I like to make circles in the middle in the beginning and then figure eights and then the serpentine and all of that because that way the horse, if they do have a lot of energy, they understand we're not going to do much in the beginning and then they'll kind of quiet down. So with her, if you can, if it's not too bad for her arthritis, I would come in and just at a regular walk, do some circles for a while, try to get her to bend and give a little bit to the bit and be a little bit calmer there. Because I know she's kind of pulling you around and maybe she's overly excited because she hasn't been worked in a while, but she's not really listening to the bit so much and she's kind of dragging you around a little bit there. Now here she has a nice flat walk. It's a nice four beat gait. She has a nice head shake to her and she steps up pretty good. Down here, it looks like you're going downhill a little bit. So she does get just a little bit pacier going down the hill. But that's normal. They all tend to get pacey going down the hill. So I always go a little bit slower down the hill. So I would just half halt and keep her slower. She's one that I saw in part of the video, not yet, but I saw it previously that she does do a little bit of a gate, you know, a gate elope. She half canters and half gates as she's going around. So we got to get her just to kind of keep a more consistent speed with you and not keep speeding up on you. And so what I would try to do is when she's changing speeds, half haul, but if she just keeps pulling you and she's not listening to you, then take her in a small circle, like a 10 meter circle, get her to slow back down, and then I would speed back up. But I wouldn't just let her go the speed she you know, is going on her own, unless you were asking her for that. Her stop is pretty good. It looked like she listened and she backed off right away then. The uh, German Martingale, it might be helping you some, but it's not bringing her head down very much and she's a little bit more on that lateral side so if you want a fox trot let me know because i know otherwise she just does a a flat walk looks like she can do a running walk and a saddle gait so it just depends what we're looking for but here she's kind of speeding up again so she's gone past her flat walk and she's starting to go up already towards her saddle gait you see her head's not shaking anymore so her flat walk and her running walk will have a head shake to it and when she's doing her saddle gait she won't have much of a head shake which you can see right there she's not really shaking her head so that's one way for you to tell she's starting to go up more towards the saddle gait now her head shakes coming back so now we know that she's slowing down there so we just got to get her more consistent in her speeds and make sure she's going the speed that you want and again, I usually work their flat walk for like five or 10 minutes. Then if they have a running walk, I work the running walk for five or 10 minutes. And then I would do the saddle gait. Okay, so here you're going to do a turn. And what I would do is when you do the turns in the beginning, I would do the turn on the forehands because it's easier, especially if the horse isn't warmed up that well, the turn on the haunches are harder. You might have to write this down and kind of put it in your pocket or type it into your phone so you can look at it before you do the turn just to kind of remind you what to do. But when you're in the arena or the round pen, always turn towards the fencing. The turn on the forehand means the front end stays still, the back end walks around. So with that front end staying still, if you turn towards the fencing, it'll help keep her front end still. So that might be a, a way for you to remember it. That turn on the forehand, turn towards the fence, the fence will block her so she doesn't walk away. In this direction, you'd be using just a little bit of your left rein, and then you want to look towards the houses over here. You don't want to look down because then the horse will always drag you around. So you want to keep your eyes up, sit back a little bit more, use that left rein until you can kind of see the corner of her eye, 
and then with your legs that saddle puts your leg in a position that it would be fine to push your hind quarter around so keep your leg in the same position you don't have to bring it back but push with your left leg and think of pushing her hind quarter away from the fence so you want to push that hind quarter away from the fence once she gets to the fence and you're facing that direction so you're looking directly at those houses just stop for a second so you can think about it a little bit more and then turn your head and look over here towards the barn and then continue with your left rein and your left leg to push her around until you've done a 180 and she's facing this other direction anytime you're going to do a turn on the haunches you're going to turn the horse in okay anytime you're going to do the turn on the forehand you're going to turn the horse out but you might have to write that down and put it in your pocket or in your phone and look at it before you do it because it'll help to remind you okay now in time once you have the turns down really well you can do them anywhere but anytime you're doing it out towards the wall you're always going to do your turn on the forehand turning towards the fence because you're moving that hind quarter so by pushing her hind quarter this way you have room to move her hind quarter if you were going to do a turn on the forehand and turn the other way say you turn to the right you'd push her hind quarter into the fence and she wouldn't have room to move her hind quarter over so you want to think that fence blocks whichever body part that you want still so you're going to use that fence to block her front end when you do the turn on the forehand and you'll push her hind quarter away from the fence when you do the turn on the haunches you're going to use the fence to block her hind quarter and you would push her shoulders in so if you think about it but you might need to repeat it to yourself over and over again or write it down that the fence is going to block the body part you don't want to move so again, when you don't want the front end to move, you're going to turn her towards the fence because that will block her front end. When you're going to do the turn on the haunches, you're going to keep her hind quarter towards the fence so you'll push her shoulders in. Okay, so hopefully that helps. So right here when you went to do your turn, it looked like you used your right leg, so you were going to push her hind quarter over, but again, she can't because the fence is blocking here and you looked like you know if we were in the center of the arena this would be fine but out there it's not so you're looking the correct direction but when you go to try to push her see she gets stuck right there and she's like i can't really move my hind quarter so what she does instead is she moves her front and around she's still trying to do what you want but she's like i can't move my hind quarter because i'm going to hit the fence so i'll just move my front end over as she did that you look down so you want to keep your eyes up when you're doing it and we just got to think a little bit more clearly about the turns and it'll start to make sense but again you might have to repeat it over and over the fence will block the body part we don't want to move okay all right so now let's go the other direction so here I know she's kind of bulging in on you and then as you're pulling on the bit she's not really listening to you so another thing I would do with her, because mares, of course, are very smart. And so with the bit that you have in that loose ring snaffle, it doesn't help you block her at all. So if we want to use another snaffle, I would use a full cheek because the full cheek, when you pull on the other rein, that full cheek will block this right. side of her face. So it'll help you to get her to turn. The other thing, I would keep a stick in your hand and if she won't turn you know it doesn't need to be a real long stick it could be a crop but something that comes down to about here you can tap her on the shoulder to help her to turn to make her move away from it or you could kind of you know your stick would be like this and you could turn it this way and just wave it towards her face and that'll make the horse want to move away from it and it'll help him to turn so when the horses are screwing around with you the stick can help a lot to get the horse back where you want it to go when it's not turning. So you just put it in the hand that you need to block the horse with. So if she kept cutting to the inside, you'd put it on your inside hand, which would be your left hand. If she kept going to the outside, you'd put it in your right hand, which would be your outside hand, and then you can help to push her over. Okay, so she's doing a little bit of a running walk there. 
and her head's up a little bit but she's gating pretty well so i don't think bringing her head down is a big deal unless you were trying to get the fox trot okay Now I would just make sure when you stop her, you stop her straight because that's where she kind of cut in before. And with smart horses, anywhere you stop, they're gonna try and stop there again. And if you stop and face in, then anytime you get over there, she's gonna try to cut in. So with her, anytime you stop, I would try to stop her out here by the fence and keep her straight. Because they're gonna associate that stop, of course, with rest. And if she's straight, then she'll try, she will try to stay straight and think, well, she'll go around, I'll stay straight, and then she'll stop me. But if you stop like this where she turns in, then as they go around, they go, oh, if I could just get in the middle and turn in, they'll stop and I'll get a break. And then they keep doing that over and over again. Now here it looks like you're going to do another turn on the forehand. But for now, until we get these down, I would always do it by the fence. So now you're going off of your right rein and it should be your right leg pushing her hind quarter around. And with your eyes, you wanna look up at the truck, look at the house, and then look at the barn. But you gotta tell yourself that. So I would always stop, think about it, prepare and take your time. Even if you're videotaping it, don't worry about it. Take your time and then think, stay by the fence. I'm gonna do a turn on the forehand. I want the fence to block the part that I don't want to move since the forehand is the part I don't want to move. I'm gonna keep her front end right by the fence, turn towards the right and push her hind quarter around with your right leg. So there you're kind of looking down and she walked away. Now, if you're just doing what's called a half turn, and this would be a reverse half turn, then that is fine. But if you were trying to do your turn on the forehand there, then she kind of dragged you around and didn't do it very well at all. Now, as you're just walking around, everything else looks pretty good. Your eyes are up most of the time. It, they just go down when you're doing those turns. And when you're doing this little serpentine with her, she just is not bending enough. So again, I would try to make circles with her a fair amount before you you start that serpentine to make sure she's giving to your leg and arcing her body. As you're doing the serpentine, if she's not giving and bending with her body, you can always, as you turn, if like when you turn to the left, if she didn't bend, you could just take her in a circle, circle a couple of times, then go back into your serpentine. So anytime she's not bending, just take her in a circle, then go back into your serpentine. And anytime you're having problems steering her, try to look up the horses feel when your head dropped down and then they know they got you so you always want to keep sitting back and looking up anytime she messes with you once you get to the end here you're walking and then she kind of goes right up into that saddle gate and again i'm just not sure if you're asking her for that i know you said she's pretty lazy but it looks like she moves off your leg quite easily so you'll see with the saddle gate, you kind of get a little wiggle back and forth in the saddle. You won't get much head shake. And it is a four beat gate. Now I think you're just taking a break. So the only thing I don't know from the videos, just because we're not talking, is just if you're asking her to do those things or she's just speeding up on her own. Okay, so here it looks like you're gonna do the turn on the haunches and so as you do it again that's what i think you're trying to do both your hands would come towards me your right leg your inside leg would be off and you're going to use the leg next to the fence so when you're in the arena and we're learning to do these things just to help because everybody it's not just you everybody gets confused with turn on the haunches and turn on the forehand when you do the turns always do it the turn by the fence when you do those turns again, the fence will block whichever body part you don't want to move, but you will use the same leg if it's a turn on the forehand or it's a turn on the haunches when you're standing by the fence. So if you do a turn on the forehand, it's left rein and left leg, but you're turning that way and pushing her hindquarter around. If you're doing a turn on the haunches, 
you're going to have your left rein against her neck and open your right rein to guide her, but not pulling back on it so much. And then your left leg is right by the girth or a little bit forward, and you would push her front end inward. So when you go to start this turn, it looks like you're using your right leg. So again, you always want to use the leg next to the fence, no matter if it's a turn on the forehand or a turn on the haunches. So the main thing that tells the horse which body part to move is where your leg is positioned. So if it's a turn on the forehand where you're pushing the hind quarter, have the leg back a little bit, but again, your saddle puts you in the correct position. If it's a turn on the haunches where you're moving the shoulders, then push that leg forward a little bit, but it's going to be in this direction, your left leg. So your right rein would open up and your left rein would go against her neck if you're doing the turn on the haunches and you would use the opposite leg. So see, there you're using your right leg and you might have been trying to do a turn on the forehand, but she comes off the rail just because she can't do the turn on the forehand when you push her hind quarter towards the fence because the fence is in the way. Now she tends to drag you. I know there's probably something over here that she's trying to uh, get to because she keeps going this way. So what I would do is if she drags you over here or the horse keeps pulling you a certain area like a gate or towards the barn or something and it keeps happening and you try to push them over with your leg and get after them or you're tapping them with the stick. But every single time they just keep dragging you over there we call those magnets when the horse is drawn to something. So then what I do, because I want to get it over with so you're, I'm not fighting with the horse the whole time, I take them over to whatever it is. So if that is their stall or that is their buddy or that's a part of the arena that they kept taking breaks in, and then what I do is I take them over where they want to go and I work the heck out of them. I do turn on the forehands, turn on the haunches, I do rollbacks, I do circles, serpentines, and I do it fast. And I keep moving their feet and then I go somewhere else like over here and then I take a break. And then I go by that area again and if they want to go over there, I let them take me over there. I'm like, all right, go ahead and make the mistake and then I do it again. The other thing you can do if you can't work and get their feet moving that fast is I slide the bit pretty hard across their tongue if they're dragging me over somewhere I don't want to go. And I have it on my barn sour video, so I'll send it to you. So I pull with one hand, pull with the other, pull with one hand, pull with the other. And so I make that bit go like this across their tongue. So what I'm trying to do is associate you, the horse coming over here with something uncomfortable. So again, that could be work or you could slide that bit across her tongue as she's doing it. And then when she gets away from it, then I stop sliding it and release and tell them, you know, like the good, good job. So what you're trying to do is just show her if she keeps choosing to go over there, what happens when she does go over there. And that usually works really well because just trying to keep the horse away from it doesn't always work. But you take them over there and show them it's not a good place to be. They don't want to go over there anymore. Now it looks like she kind of dragged you over here again. I'm going to try and stop it. So when she drags you over here, again, you could either slide that bit, give her jobs to do, but if it's something like this where it looks like it's blocking, I go, okay, let's go over there and let's side pass this way and side pass that way and side pass this way and side pass that way. And I don't do it once or twice. I do it five to 10 times to make sure they really don't want to go over there again. And then it helps me because I worked on the side pass a whole bunch of times and then I'll take them away from it and then give them something to relax with. But again, since she has this magnet, what we're trying to do is take her over to the magnet and then show her that, you know, it's not a good place to be. Now here she's kind of flat walking and then there she was close to a running walk. So if you want her to do a running walk, just keep her a little bit slower because she kind of goes past it and goes right up to that saddle gate where you don't see her shaking her head that much. So again, it looks like she has very nice gates. It's just practicing the speed of those gates and making sure she's clear on which ones you want her to do. Okay, so here's your backup. So as you do your backup, if possible, try to lean back a little bit more and then 
she doesn't do it very well. Like you're asking, but she's kind of fighting and she's dragging her feet. She's just not putting much effort into it. And then you're looking down at her. So try to keep your eyes up. What I would do is practice this on the ground with her first. And I would, you could do it with the bridle on and the bit, and you're just going to pull on the bridle. I think I have a video of that too, so I'll send that to you. And then wave a stick at her legs in here to create some energy to get her to back up. And make sure she can do that really well on the ground. Like anytime you take her out, I would practice doing that with her and get her to back up three to five steps pretty good and practice it like 10 times each time you take her out and you're walking her around. And then once she can do that well, then once you get up in the saddle, she should make the association so it becomes much easier. The German Martingale, it's not holding her head down that much. And I know she's fighting you a lot with this bit. So again, you could try the full cheek snaffle. If she's pulling on you the whole time, then you could try more of like a short shank bit if you want. It might give you a little bit more control over her, and then it would help to bring her head down a little bit. So if you want something like that, or you can send me pictures of what bits you have, and I can help you see if we could put something else in her that might help a little bit more, because the one she has in her mouth, she tends to fight a fair amount. So here as you were getting your reins adjusted, again, she just keeps going back up into that gate. There she's gate eloping a little bit. So to me, it just looks like she has her own agenda and she's kind of choosing what she wants to do. And then she's not paying attention to her feet so much just because she's kind of dragging you around, which a lot of horses do. So, you know, that's why I think she's tripping once in a while and the tripping's not that bad. Now, there you did a little bit of a turn on the haunches, but again, you turned her the wrong direction because if you were going to do the turn on the haunches, you should have turned inward, not outward. Because there she had moved her front end, not her back end. So now I think you go to one-handed, which she does pretty well. It looks like she neck reins and everything. But what I'm noticing most of the time, like back there, you had a pretty good head shaking gait. That orb thing keeps going by. <laughs> I don't know if you have anybody who's watching over you. They always say that with orbs. But um, she keeps just changing her speed. You start out and it's a flat walk and she goes right through the running walk and then she goes right up to that saddle gate. So I would just try to get her speed control a little bit more consistent. It looks like she neck reins pretty nice. Um, you don't have to have your hand that high. I would bring it down a couple of inches. But again, sometimes people are taught by other instructors to have their hand way up there. So I would keep it a little bit lower. So there she was doing a little bit more of that gait elope. So she's kind of gating and half cantering. Uh, so overall, I think you did really well. I think this is a nice horse with exercise. She's probably going to lose some of that weight, which would be much better for her joints. And mares, you know, they and mares and geldings test. You know, lots of great horses test people because they want you to be better and they want you to do the right thing. And they will push all your buttons showing you you don't know what you're doing. But they do that, and then we become much, much better riders if we don't give up. So I think this is a good horse to learn on. I think she's good to practice. And I think she has great gaits. We just got to do a little bit more speed control. And then I'll type up some more information on turn on the forehand and turn on the haunches. So hopefully that will help clarify it for you. And then I'll send you some recommendations for uh, bits and a stick in case you don't have one. Um, but overall, I think she's going to be a very nice horse.